In this lecture, I'm going to take you through the role and function of education according to the functionalist. Now, you'll remember from um, previous learning that the functionalists are a consensus structural approach. This means that they uh, believe that their research focus is on social institutions rather than, than the individual and how they influence and impact both behaviour of the individual and the shape of society in general. Now, as a consensus theory, they believe that everybody or all the social institutions work together in order to maintain and society, that there's a, an organic analogy, if you like, where like the human body, where everything works together um, positively for the betterment of society. And now we're going to focus on education and what to, functionalists believe about education. In an overarching view, their belief is that the role of education and the function of education in society is to create and maintain social solidarity and cohesion. So they believe that one of the is the corner one of the cornerstones of society and is there to ensure that society flourishes and that society remains a positive place for all its members. Now, what we're going to do as we go through this lecture is we're going to look at how the education system um, maintains social solidarity and cohesion. And the first person we're going to look at is Durkheim and his views on um, education. Now, for Durkheim, he didn't really spend a lot of time thinking or talking about education, but he did say that education was key in the socialization process and they are particularly key as secondary agents of socialization so what he's suggesting here is that the family the caregivers the immediate people and groups surrounding a child um, provides primary socialization meaning that they teach them the essentials of society the norms and the values and the ways of behaving um, in the home and then when they go to school they actually um, reinforce this through the education system so they, they're adding to the socialization that happens in the home so as a secondary agent of socialization it reinforces the positive socialization for um, society and maybe negates some of the more negative um, the, uh, norms and values that might be more familial or um, subcultural to society and he believes that this is a really important element of um, the education system and this was built on by Talcott Parsons um, who later kind of looked at what Durkheim was saying and kind of developed it a little bit further and what he talks about is the bridge effect and how education acts as a bridge between the family and society in general. And he talks about particularistic and universalistic values. A particularistic value is a norm of behaviour or a value that is unique to a particular person in a particular context. For example, a child in their home behaviors that perhaps they would get they they're that are accepted within the home may not be accepted in wider society and this links into the the universalistic values these are the social norms and values these are the values that um, society says that we should be aiming for and the norms of behavior that allow us to be part of society and for Parsons, he's, he viewed the education system as kind of the bridge between the two, a place where students can learn or young people can learn the universalistic values, make social mistakes without it having too much of an impact, because the purpose of education is to teach those universalistic values and allow, therefore, letting, getting people um, young people to be able to engage in society as a whole 
and be an active, positive member of society by understanding that, yeah, you can do certain things at home, but you can't do them in wider society. It might be, to use a rather gross example, it might be perfectly okay to pick your nose at home. You don't do it in public. It might be okay to swear at home or use certain curse words in your home, but it's not okay in public. And schools provide that buffer to allow student, young people and, and students to find out these universalistic values and find out what is what the difference between being at home and being part of a society. And uh, it, this kind of understanding is the key role of um, education because it means that people are able to be part of society and the, to maintain that cohesive nature of society because all members are following the same set of rules and the same set of values. Now there are slight issues with this. This is not um, a perfect view of education and it's quite a rose-tinted view of education because it's assuming that children are passive puppets of the socialization that they receive in schools and they just soak it all up like a sponge accept it and change their behavior now we know that this is not the case because we have behavior issues in schools we have anti-school subcultures we have the formation of other subcultures within um, schools and that shows us that children are not passive puppets they will act against um, norms and values that they don't agree with they will act up against the norms and values that perhaps they don't understand or that know why that they they have to behave in in certain ways and it, you often hear it particularly in primary schools when somebody uses the phrase because i said so is responded to but why why am I not allowed to use that word? Why am I not allowed to pick my nose? Now, occasionally you get some silly responses. I remember as a child being told, don't pick your nose, your brains will fall out. Really not going to happen. But as a small child, you, you kind of believe it. So there, there are times where um, people will make up reasons for um, not doing certain behaviours. But the fact that children are asking why and requiring that um, explanation of certain behaviours or certain beliefs and things like that so it shows us that children are not passive puppets or sponges who are soaking up the um, norms and values that are being transmitted and are actually questioning. Um, and there is another um, criticism of the education system that it kind of knocks out that um, curiosity and questioning nature by using phrases such as because I said so, because it's the rules. Okay. Another criticism is, oh my animation's going a bit weird, is the idea of dysfunction and the view that schools are not always positive places. In fact, they can be quite negative for some people. Um, and we can see that through um, bullying and through um, people who are school refusers, but we can also see it through things like the ethnocentric curriculum or the in institutional racism within schools, where not all students have a positive experience within school. So this may mean that they reject those universalistic values that are being taught. And finally, it's suggesting that there is a value consensus in society. And we've talked about this previously, but um, a value consensus suggests that we all have the same values. We all have the same goals in life. We all have the same desires um, in life. And that's what keeps society stable and cohesive. Now, we know that this is not the case because we have diversity within society. We have different family types, different career paths, um, choices that people make within society we are not all cookie cutter the same that you'd find in like a american movie from the 1950s for example where everybody has the same house everyone has the same 
um, goals in life, everyone wants the same things. We don't have that in society. And this view that education system passes on the values um, and norms of society suggests that perhaps there is, but we have the evidence that there's not. Moving on then, another view of the role of education comes from Schultz, and he talks about uh, the education system developing human capital. And what he suggests is that the investment in education benefits the wider economy, and this therefore benefits society in general and creates that cohesive nature because um, an, a society with a stable economy has less social conflict, there's less um, barriers between um, different groups within society. And Schultz argues that the education can provide properly trained, qualified and flexible workforce um, and ensure that the skills necessary for a society to continue and to um, get better and move forward, the best place for that to happen is within the education system. And it, it links in with our next one, which we'll talk about in a minute. But this development of human capital means that it allows every person within the society to um, have, a, have a place, have a, um, an appropriate role to play that fits them. They are of benefit to society. And as I said, this links into our next theory, which comes from Davis and Moore, and they talk about role allocation. And they talk about sifting and sorting people into the social hierarchy. And they talk about the, the idea of meritocracy. So the idea that um, people are placed in the best place, the, the best part, um, start again. They are, the people are able to access the best jobs, wealth and status because they have talent or because they have worked hard. It's not to do with other social structures because according to the functionalists, all the other social structures aim to um, benefit and support the education system. So for Davis and Moore, they see the education system as a way of um, sorting people to the best possible position that they should have in society. And that is based upon a meritocratic system. You get there because of hard work, you get there because of talent, it is not linked to your social structures such as class, ethnicity or gender. Now again, there are issues with this um, view and the Marxists are very quick to point out the myth of meritocracy and suggest that this idea of work hard, do well in school and you can move up the social hierarchy, you can get a good job, all of these things is actually a myth because your gender, your ethnicity, your um, social class all have an impact on your educational achievement. And th they argue that the education system is built by the middle class for the middle class. So they are able to attain better grades, um, achieve more within their education system within their education, which then allows them to access more higher paid jobs or access higher social status. The Marxists also argue that, that this, this idea of meritocracy is a complete myth because we have private schools and private schools work on a um, not what you know, but who you know type system, according to the Marxists. Um, and even if you don't do very well academically, the connections you make and the connection and the people you meet and the alumni associated with your private school can still get you those high powered jobs. Good example, Boris Johnson went to Eton, didn't do particularly well um, in terms of academics. He's now prime minister. 
he was a journalist in a high high status newspaper um, and a lot of that came from his connections that he made at Eton, not necessarily hard work. Um, they also argue that there is a weak link between educational achievement and economic success. There are people who are very, very ac academic and achieve wonderful things within their grades, but they don't necessarily go on to um, economic success or high social status. A lot of university academics who have qualifications coming out of their ears are not particularly wealthy people. Um, and again, we can link this to the myth of meritocracy in this idea that status and wealth doesn't come from your academic achievements or from your educational achievements. It comes from who you know and the opportunities that are opened to you because of where you went to school or who you went to school with. And finally, there is this idea of inequality where the education system assumes that we're all equal going into our education and we're not. We have evidence to suggest that girls go into their education with higher levels of literacy and cognitive development than boys, and that can then perpetuate through their education system. We know that um, there are issues in terms of inequality, in terms of class and the different options and opportunities available to people. So this assumption that the education system is equal is also a myth. Now, if we move on now and talk about the new right. So the new right are a branch of functionalism. They are a development of functionalism and they believe that the education system has failed in its um, aims. So it agrees with the idea that the education system is about um, socialisation and that it is creating social solidarity and social cohesion. But for the new right, they believe that the education system has failed in its job to do this. And they believe that in order for the education system to fulfil its functions of socialisation, developing human capital, and role allocation, there needs to be more competition. And not just competition within school, but competition between schools. Um, and Chubb and Mo um, were very much proponents of parentocracy and the idea that parents should have choice. They should be able to choose to send their children to the best schools. And they put forward a suggestion of education vouchers. Now, they, they, they are American and they were looking at the American education system, but this could be applied to the UK as well. And what they wanted was to remove government oversight for the education system, basically turning education private. And the government would then provide vouchers to parents to use to spend on fees to send their children to school. So all, all parents would get this. So they're not saying that they're certain groups shouldn't get vouchers and that certain ch children shouldn't get an education. What they're saying is by providing these vouchers, parents could find the best school for their child. Whether, and, and there would be more competition between schools because they would then have to compete for, for students in the same way that shops have to compete for customers. And um, schools should see parents and, and students as consumers. So in order to get the best, the, to get the students, they are required to be the best school. So it raises a, um, the quality of education. With um, increased competition within schools, they talk about um, limiting grading. So great, we, we, always, we still grade on a bell curve, but really kind of limiting, saying that within a year group, only the top 5% can get an A. 
for example. Now, again, remember they're talking about the American system, so they don't have GCSEs and A-levels in the same way that we do. They have GPAs, um, grade point averages, and um, they rank their students. So in a lot of films and American shows, you see, oh, I graduated in the top five percent of my class and and things like that we don't have that in the uk but their argument is if we did that would increase attainment it would increase achievement within school and create more in terms of ensuring that the best people get into the best jobs because you're suggesting to students that if you want to be the best if you want to do these high level jobs you need to work hard for it you need to do it not nobody else so it's that self-sufficiency that we we associate with the new right now again in some american schools they say that they would only give recommendation letters for ivy league schools to the top 10 percent of the class um we, again not the system we have in the uk but their argument is that by creating this competition, we will improve the education system and we will allow the education system then to um, complete its aims of in developing human capital and ensuring that people are sifted and sorted into the social hierarchy appropriately. Now, there are issues with this um, theory and the biggest one being that, that creates a fear of failure now if you haven't watched it there's a really good documentary on netflix called um varsity blues the college admission scandals and as part of that they have the um short interview clips from students who talk about how the moment they start high school they're talk they're already talking about colleges and you've got to be on the advanced placement courses and You've got to do this extracurricular and that extracurricular and the pressure on the students if they're not getting straight a's if their gpa is below um four or whatever the, the gpa goes up to they are terrified because that could influence their late their their um opportunities later in life there's also the issue that it is simplifying a very complex system the education system isn't as simple as Chubb and Mo are making out and there are factors and we've talked about this in um, a previous lecture where it's not just about the cost of sending a child to school in terms of vouchers there's the geographical element to it and being able to physically get your child to that school um, there is ethos there's faith there's parental experiences, which will all influence where you send your child to school. Um, on paper, a school may look amazing. You go and visit and you're like, yeah, no, not sending my child there. Okay. Um, at Wyndham College, for example, we have Saturday school and that can put off some parents from uh, uh, sending their child here. We're still an oversubscribed school, but that Saturday morning lessons can be off putting to some students and some parents. They may have other commitments on a Saturday morning. Um, and it's also contradictory because it's saying that we need more competition um, but they and they want government oversight to leave. But at the same time, they're influencing policy and saying that this is what governments should put in place. So it kind of contradicts itself in terms of the sense of we don't want government oversight, but we do want the government to tell you what to do. So it doesn't quite work. So in terms of the functions theory of education, the main thrust of their um, theory is that it is to the, the function and role of education is to maintain social solidarity and social cohesion. And they do this through socialization, the bridging effect, development of human capital and role allocation. OK, socialisation is not the role of education. Socialisation is how they fulfil the role of education. 